What's up, Nabooers? Here's a new thing. There was conversation in the forum about ADM3 emulation. Now that's the terminal emulation that the Nabu uses for displaying characters in various areas on the screen. And Telnet, Putty, etc. when you do redirection from the Nabu onto your PC, there is no emulation supported for the old fashioned ADM3. So I've created the Nabu Telnet terminal and this will run on your PC and you have full ADM3 emulation. So we can, for example, jump into, uh, let's see, what's in user seven? I'm gonna look for the super calc because super calc is a good example to use. There we go, SC, super calc. So this is gonna use ADM3 emulation to put characters on the screen in various locations. And this is what the old school terminals would have used. And we'll push enter to start it. Okay, so I can use the arrow keys and type my stuff, which I have no idea how to use SuperCalc. So <laughs> that's about it. But we are actually in 80 column mode right now, which means that um, this is, I guess, how you would use it if it was over a terminal. And you can see how characters are being put all over the place because that's what happens when you're in, um, in running the actual correct emulation. So we'll exit this. Now, if I jump back into user area one, there is a program for testing different emulation modes, which is either VT52 or ADM3, that's what the BIOS supports. Now, because we're not using the BIOS in this particular case, we're just running the actual emulator. So we'll be able to see, look at that. <laughs> it's exactly what we expected to see. So we got our boxes around. We have some inverted text as well, which is pretty cool. And then we got some characters being put on the screen and hidden, shown, numbers being put in there. And then boom, clear from the center of the screen, everything after the X will disappear. So this is actually testing the emulation, the terminal emulation. We inserted down and that's it. Now suppose you want to get it and install it on your own computer, then visit nabu.ca, go to downloads and select the Nabu Telnet terminal. Now there's a chicken and an egg situation here because I don't have the video up because I'm filming it now. So the video in the, is a placeholder. I'll click download. And now we're gonna open our download location and it's a zip file so we can just extract what's inside of that zip file, we'll get a folder, and then we can just run the Telnet terminal program. Now, for this to work, we're gonna to need to be able to Telnet into the internet adapter. So to do that, you're gonna first have to visit the settings in the internet adapter. So click on settings, go to RetroNet, and turn on the RetroNet TCP server. By default, it'll be off. And the port default is 5815, that'll be fine. We'll click save. And we're going to use Cloud CPM. Now let's turn on our NABU. Now we can redirect everything that comes out of the console right into the terminal emulator. And we can do that by just start typing in redirect. Now I'm going to continue using the NABU keyboard, but I'm going to change the output to be the Telnet server. So I'm going to hit the letter D. And I'll have the letter S to save and quit. Now this allows me to be able to view what's gonna happen on here and input it through the Nabu keyboard. So I'm just gonna hit enter to select my local IP address because I'm connecting to the Nabu network adapter that's on the same computer. If you're gonna connect over the network, you wanna type in a different IP address and the same port. There we go. So now if I hit enter on my Nabu keyboard, I'm in Nabu Cloud CPM. If I wanted to switch to say user area eight and run, for example, Turbo Pascal, now you can see how the drive is still loading. So we can still look over at the Nabu screen and see that the drive is still loading. And now we have here our Turbo Pascal being emulated with ADM3A. You can see it's clearing the screen, doing all the jazz it needs to do. So I'd be able to go into, for example, options 
and change values. You see how the screen's refreshing and things are happening. Edit a file, give it a file name. So this is essentially um, an ADM3 terminal. Now, emulation might not be 100% yet, so if you run into any problems, please definitely let me know. And uh, I'll take a look and see what I could do about that. Another program which I know is kind of cool, that's in user area three, is called Ladder. I don't know if any of you have seen this yet, but it is a, a fun little ASCII game that you can run a character around with. So by default, as you can see, it's already configured for ADM3, so I'll hit P to play. And it is, um, left and right is the period and comma. And then the little character down here. <laughs> oh, I died already. <laughs> And you can hear there's a beeps too, so the emulator runs beeps as well. And then letter A will make you go up a ladder. <laughs> you got beeps and points, nice. <laughs> of course we have good old fashioned basic gorilla. So for this we're going to select the letter f number five the letter five, we're gonna select the number five. And we can hit one to start a game. Nice. <laughs> Interesting the way I rendered that because the one gorilla is kind of floating in the air. And not kind of, he actually is. Don't fall, buddy. Production Dave's Tetris is obviously super cool, but did you know, which I didn't know, by watching the Tetris movie that the first version of Tetris was done on a serial console because they didn't have um, a computer. Ooh, it's called Q. Tetris. <laughs> There's no E. It's, it was on a computer that uh, wasn't MS-DOS based and didn't have any like VGA or any, any sort of uh, graphics card. So the first version was entirely, here we'll start at level seven. Ooh. I'm gonna have to use my, there we go, use a number pad. Cool, now how do I rotate a piece? Two, oh, there we go, nice. And to drop a piece, it looks like it's a space bar. But I'm not gonna be able to do that because I'm uh, holding the camera. <laughs> now, when I watched the movie, the Tetris movie the other day, um, it was neat because they actually used square brackets for all of the um, the shapes that would come down. And this just is using uh, pound signs, number signs. Okay, let's exit with escape. As of today's first initial release from April the 12th, it doesn't do VT52 emulation yet, but I actually copied the C code from my BIOS into this and edited it. So all I have to do next is add some function keys to allow you to switch between emulation modes. So keep an eye out on the forum.nabu.ca because there will be an update probably the next day or two, or even tonight if I get bored. <laughs> and uh, I'll add VT52 emulation as well. So then you'll be able to run Telnet and other programs that require VT52. All right, Nabooers, I'll see you in the next video.